Hey trappers, I just got back uh, from the Pennsylvania Trappers Rendezvous uh, last weekend and I saw my friend Bill Duke there and he was, uh, he had a few of these Duke Traps banners um, and I walked over and I thought, you know, one of those would be really neat to hang above my workbench when I make uh, YouTube videos and as I was walking over, Wes Osborne grabbed the last one um, and Bill said, well, I don't want you to not have one of the banners. So he had his dad ship me one and I had it a day after I got back. So, uh, I said to Bill, I said, that would be really good to have for the next video that I'm going to do. And, uh, I had it planned out. I just didn't get around to do it, but I wanted to, I wanted to do a video on one of the most popular common traps out there. Um, and that is the Duke one and a half. Um, I, I kind of consider the one and a half Duke um, similar to what the number one victor was, oh, 1,500 years ago. And uh, it's kind of like the 30-30 of traps right now. Um, very common, very versatile, very economical. Uh, and very much available. Um, speaking of availability of traps, uh, you know, r right now it's it's Ju June of 2022, and I talked to Brian McKee at the at the rendezvous, and he's the new owner of Sleepy Creek, and um, he said getting steel right now is a pretty big issue so uh he, he he's in, they're not in production of sleepy creek yet and as far as oneida victor is concerned i have heard through the grapevine that they're not even producing traps over the last bit of time um dealers can't even get get their traps um so really that leaves of the, of the bigger manufacturers, uh, trap manufacturers out there, it leaves the Bridger one and a half and, and the Duke one and a half if you're looking for a one and a half size trap. Um, and like I said, it, this Duke one and a half is, is a really, really popular trap and, and it's, it's kind of replaced the old number one long spring um, in, in popularity and, and versatility. Um, so, okay, first off, let's talk about uh, one of the reasons why this trap is so popular. Uh, and simply put, it's, it's a really good, well-designed trap. Um, it, it, it's, it's very effective at holding and catching and holding animals. Um, the target species... A lot of people use them for raccoon, um, muskrat, mink. It's a good fox trap. Some guys use it for fisher. Um, and, and naming all these fur bear species off, as you can see, it's a very versatile trap. Um, plenty of, plenty of uh, examples of guys holding coyotes in Duke One and has, especially the Midwestern guys that are pocket setting and coyote will come down the bank and try to get a piece of fish or whatever and get caught. Um, but, you know, I, I would not definitely not consider it a coyote trap, but uh, it's, it's held a lot of coyotes. I'm really, uh, it's good for most fur bearers, except for, uh, you could say coyote, maybe bobcat and beaver. Um, definitely not a beaver trap, but guys have caught beaver and and, and held them in them. That's the thing about a, a Duke one and a half. If you get uh, if you get something to get its paw committed in there, you're gonna probably hold it and have it the next day. Um, lots of otter have been caught incidentally in these things. Like I said, coyote, beaver. Um, they're a little bulldog or a trap. It's a tenacious, you know, a tenacious little piece of equipment that. That really, uh, really has huge holding power, great holding power, and and that's why I think one of the reasons why it's become so popular is because, um, coon, you know, raccoon are very, very powerful animals, um, and they'll they'll test a trap as far as pullouts are concerned, and these are very, very good on raccoon. Um, 
a lot of guys say they use a, a Duke one and a half over just about anything, especially traps with smoother rounded jaws. If you remember the old one and a half Montgomery, they were very popular with fox trappers because um, of the nice smooth jaws and they, they didn't they didn't cut or anything like that. Um, but raccoon trappers did not like that smoothness because when you got a wet muddy paw um, and coupled with the power of a raccoon, you some pullouts would occur. Um, so yeah, like I said, very effective, uh, great holding power, great design, very versatile. There's a number of animals, uh, fur bearing animals, all your smaller fur bearers, this trap works great for. Um, extremely economical. All Duke traps are very economical. You, you can buy these at a really reasonable price and, you know, uh, having a good value, uh, a lot of times goes hand in hand with something being a, you know, a popular model of trap. Uh, like I said before, they're available. Um, you, every dealer out there carries Duke one and a halves, uh, because they're just so, so popular. Um, and, you know, one last thing about the Duke one and a half, it's a very simple design, very easy to work on. Um, you know, like I, I, the old Gibbs style coil spring is what it's patterned after. It's the most popular, um, longest lasting design of uh, coil spring type trap really in history. Um, it stood the test of time and the Duke is very simple. And the other thing, one last thing I just want to touch on, it, um, it's a good beginner's trap because uh, it, it, it works really, and I'll show that in a bit. Um, it works really good with trap setters. Uh, so if somebody's just starting out and don't really have the hand strength or the mechanics of setting a trap, um, this, this trap is not oversprung and it works really good with a pair of setters if you're trying to teach a kid or, or uh, an, a beginner how to how to set traps so i will uh i will just go through i mean every you know it all depends what species you're after and your personal preference um there's different ways of tuning and modifying these i will show you uh some of the tuning that i would do if i was going to use these for an all-purpose uh multi-species trap if i if i was just going to use them in water i probably wouldn't do as much um, but if I'm going to use them as a backup fox trap um, or a, you know, and then use them on the mink line or, or, or use them on dry land raccoon or whatnot, I, I'd set them up like I would for, for fox trap. And so they work well um, using them in dirt sets. And then they also, you know, then they'll work fine using them in water as well. Um, yeah, I mean, one, one good thing about these guys is, uh, like I said, they're very, they're very economical. Um, and as I've mentioned in other videos, I have a lot of drive overs um, on my Fox line, you know, farm equipment, trucks, ATVs. Uh, so I get, I get a lot of traps that get squashed a little bit and bend up a little bit. Um, and, the, and these Duke one and a halves, um, they're good in putting those places where you know they're going to get uh, driven over because one if the trap would totally be destroyed which rarely happens is you, you can usually bend them back into shape you're not out of a lot of money and uh, number two they're, they're pretty lightweight and they're pretty easy to bend back into shape um, so you know that's that's just another side use another benefit of these they're, they're they make a really good uh, I don't want to say throwaway trap um, but if you have situation where you're gonna have drive overs, or if you're water trapping, um, or even land trapping, and you're worried about theft, you're not out a whole lot of money um, if you lose one of these. But I'll go through a couple, uh, couple small modifications and tuning, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, first thing I do to these Duke one and a halves, and. I do it on just about every trap that has a dog, is I pinch this dog eye shut. Put that in the vise and squeeze that shut like that. And that gets rid of that side to, or front and back play. So it's really easy to do. Just 
close it up. Um, can actually go a little bit yet. You don't want to go too far. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Because if you, if you go too far and the dog is binding, you can just put the dog in device like that and twist it. And it'll open back up. You can see that that dog I shot in there's there's no more back and forth play. Okay, I'm gonna want to replace the chain on these. Um, not that it, not that the chain is not sufficient. I just like uh, well the leak machine chain on especially any trap I'm going to use on land. I just think it beds a little better. Um, so simply open up that swivel some, remove the chain. We're going to add, we're going to add something else later. Um, and I'm going to night latch these. So I'll hold the, I'll hold the nut, the pan nut with a needle nose. Remove the pan bolt. Now, what we're gonna do to these, which I also do this to my uh, to my one and three quarters and even my number threes and whatnot. I like to drill out the uh, the pan post and the pan shank, the holes. You can use a number fourteen bit or a three sixteenth inch bit. It will work as well. This is kind of how I go about doing that. Oh, I want to show you this real quick. Before you drill them out, I will usually take a screwdriver and uh, spread spread the dog, or the, I'm sorry, the pan post a little bit. Um, because when they when they add when they put the pan in there and they tighten it up, it kind of bend it'll bend those pan posts inwards. Um, so I am going to use a washer as a spacer in there, a brass washer. It keeps corrosion. Um, it helps to keep down on corrosion and, and so that it, it doesn't bind. Um, and it also just makes your pan action a lot smoother with a spacer in there. So that's why I open that up a little bit. And how I drill them out, I just kind of do one side at a time. I had the right size bit in there. I just ruined that trap. Nope, we're all right. I thought it was, I thought it was there. Well, we don't have to worry about that bit anymore. It's seen a lot of use. All right. Usually when I drill out that pan bowl or pan post, I'll take a file and clean it up a little bit. Now I use the next size bigger. I use the next size bigger um, screw, which is a number 10. Now I gotta hunt myself a new a new drill bit to drill the pan out. So I'm gonna shut the camera off and do that. This video isn't going as well as I was would have hoped. Okay, folks, I had found another bit to replace the one I just broke and I, I drilled out the pan shank with a 3 16 inch bit. Um, this is also night latched ready. Um, I'm not gonna take the time to go through and show how to night latch. I have a video on my channel here on night latching and that goes into detail of how to do that. Um, so simply, I use a 10S brass washer and a number 10 bolt. Now usually when I'm First adjusting my pan tension, I crank her down pretty tight. 
to crank her down real tight, just like that. And then you can play around a little bit with the, uh, you can bend at the pan so you get a good level pan. And that looks pretty good. It looks real good, actually. Um, that's about what I want right there. It's nice, smooth action. Um, I'll take a little bit of that tension off, but it looks pretty good. Now, I just want to grab something here. This is the chain that I'm going to be adding. Um, five links, a number two machine chain, inline swivel. And I like these flat stake swivels um, because you can put a quick link through them easily to attach to a cable stake or a chain or whatever. Um, also, they work good with a bob vest toggle and they work good with a split ring. So they're kind of universal. Now, we really don't single stake with rebar for on land when there's coyotes, but uh, there might be some situations where uh, you wouldn't need to, you know, single stake a real long stake in a place where you don't think you'd have a coyote and you can use it for that too. But we'll attach that. I'm not going to move the camera just to do that. I'm just going to put that in my vise. And uh, attach the chain. So now the pan is night latched. It's drilled out. It's ready to go. Um... The dog eye is closed. Now, what we're going to do, uh, th these dogs, especially the last uh, couple runs, a lot of different traps, but Dukes are getting, the dogs keep getting longer and longer, it seems. Um, and normally, well, you just want to bend, bend that out, bend the, the dog post out. But these dogs are getting so long, I actually trim them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm just gonna trim on the grinder, um, not rocket science, until I get a pan height that I want. Um, like I said, if the dogs wouldn't be so long, i just bend that out a little bit to get it right, but I prefer to trim them. Okay, I got that dog trimmed off, um, took the file to it and got rid of any burrs. I just used my bench grinder, trimmed it off. Um, pan tension is floppy, just how I like them on these. Uh, so, the last thing I want to do is I'll set the trap, um, and pull it down into the night latch notch. Now, as you can see, that loose jaw is just sitting up a little bit. Um, not bad, but we'll fix that. Simply by putting a screwdriver in the levers like, like this, and just giving that a little bend down. Not much. Just a little bit, that'll bring that, that'll bring that loose jaw down just a tad. And get everything sitting nice and flat. Cute little things, aren't they? Okay, the last thing I do to these, uh, I didn't film that, but you've seen it in another way. I put my initials on the bottom. Um, but really the last modification slash adjustment I do to these. Um, if you ever saw Johnny Thorpe's Fisher video that uh, Alan Propes did quite a few years ago. Um, it's also in the Otter video too. But uh, one, of, one of Johnny's little tweaks that he did to traps was he bent the tips of the levers down. They just basically, all you got to do is put it in the vise like so. Give them a little tweak. That's all you gotta do. That's all you need to do. And I'll show you the benefit of this uh, next. Okay, I did not bring out my tripod or any of my other stands here to show you this, so you're going to have to bear with me. I'm going to try to do this while holding the camera with my left hand and filming with my right. Now, as you can see, those uh, tips of those levers are bent down. Now, if you want to do a surface bedded 
trap. And this, like I said, this is hard to do. You could take the foot of that trap, push it in the ground, um, like I showed in my Duke number three video. You can bring that loose jaw around, or that, I'm um, sorry, that mid-chain swivel, and put it under a loose jaw. Now that trap is fairly solid. Um, if you want to make a raccoon trail set or even uh, canine sets, uh, that that would be plenty solid enough for an animal, you know, not, not a dirt hole type situation where the animal is uh, when a turkey came to visit. Uh, but yeah, what for a surface type type set like that, those levers bent down gives the trap a little bit more stability. See what I mean? Uh, same deal if, you know, setting blind sets in the water, the tips of those levers uh, help out with making the trap a little more stable. I had mentioned in an earlier segment about uh, beginners using these traps and how they work with setters. Um, these traps work great out of the box with setters, but even with the bent lever tips, you can use setters with them as well. So I just wanted to show you that uh, bending the levers does not really affect setter use if uh, you were worried about that. All right, that's uh, pretty much it for this video. Uh, you know, it's I had a little bit of technical difficulties in this one, and uh, I'm sure some of my camera work was not on par. Um, I apologize for that, but I hope the information uh, that you got in this video is solid. Um, if you're a Duke one and a half user, I hope you can, uh, you know, find this video enjoyable and get a couple tips from it um, on how to tune and modify them. Um, that trap right there would be good for land trapping and you could take it and go right to the water with it. Um, so... Yep, give me a like. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, have a good one.